Hi, my name is Ben Howe. Not that long ago, but before COVID, I travelled from Aotearoa, New Zealand to New York. I had some questions about the music industry and I wanted to find out how a vinyl record's made. This big honking thing is a, is a vinyl cutting lathe. And this is step one of the three-step process in getting a vinyl record. So step one is this is the is the vinyl cut, the master cut, which I do with this machine. And then step two is electroplating, and step three is pressing. Lathes go back a, a, a pretty long time, so this is a, I'm on the cutting edge here with a machine that was made in the 1970s. It cuts the whole master record on these discs, which they look like vinyl records, but it's actually a completely different material, uh, which we call lacquers. And they're an aluminum disc, which is basically coated in this kind of semi-soft paint. So we're cutting into this soft material on this disc. Um, and I, I cut the whole record in real time, meaning that I have to drop this thing, the cutter head, and play the whole record in its entirety. And it cuts from the outside to the inside. Uh, and then pops up. Basically, I have to start this platter. This is an 80-pound platter that's um, driven by a giant motor. We have to have a vacuum that, that sucks this disc down to the platter so it doesn't uh, move. This whole apparatus here uh, is driven uh, from right to left by this motor box. So once this is all riding, I can, I can basically drop this head with this lever and there's a tiny cutting stylus. It's the tiny little point that's right above the, uh, the lacquer there. That's the thing that does everything for the most part. That does the cut. Mostly I'm just, I'm just making sure that it is cutting, that it is making contact with the disc, and then that material is being sucked away because if, it, if it's not sucked away, it can actually start to wrap around the middle of the record and that basically ruins the cut. This is an old machine and I, I spend a lot of time maintaining it and it's for the most part very wonderful, but many things can happen that will screw up your, um, your vinyl cut. There's kind of danger zones for vinyl that you can't have on, on digital. There can't be excessive bass or excessive treble and things like this cause distortion on records, which don't cause distortion on any other medium. So you have to know all this stuff. So it's a really hard target to hit for making like good sounding records. I'm Dan Custer, and I'm the general manager here at Brooklyn Vinyl Works. You know, it's in sort of ancient manufacturing process, even with the advent of like new machines and stuff, the technology is still the same, kind of steam and water and compressed air and stuff like that. It's a very fickle, difficult manufacturing process that's affected by, you know, the weather, it's affected by a lot of different factors. If any part of it is off, you either can't make records or you make, you know, defective records. So it's everything has to kind of work in perfect harmony. So that's a that's a challenge. I mean, I would guess the attraction to records is, is just sort of a, you know, a return to like a physical item. The more all of our lives live in the digital virtual world, maybe the more people look for tangible products like records. Vinyl is a format with like an entire culture around it. People say, well, vinyl records will eventually go away, and it's like, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, they are expensive to make. It takes a lot of effort. It's a collaboration with the whole production, manufacturing, you know, team. So you, you can think of that as like being tedious, but it's like the final product that it produces is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't have really predicted that it would, not that it would last this long, but it would be booming for this long. I wouldn't have expected that it would continue to increase the way it has.